All right, guys, welcome back. We are going to do a recap of UFC 224. We're going to touch on Bellator. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see it live. Um, we can't. We're in Thailand, and it is almost impossible to find it. I mean, it, 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 you can see clips and highlights. So we definitely saw um, the Bader King Mo fight. We saw some clip. Well, we saw basically all the, the highlights, highlights of all the main yeah. fights. So we can we can kind of touch on that. But we didn't see the full fights because there's no kind of like fight pass type thing yeah. in Bellator where you can just sign up and watch the fights yeah, from anywhere. Say, unless one of you guys want to uh, Facebook live it off your TV and <laughs> yeah. tag me in it. Or if you know where maybe they maybe they had it online and we didn't know. Um, but we did see the UFC and we can definitely touch on that. Yeah. And I think that was an amazing card, man. Holy shit. Well, for the, congrats to John Fitch, you said. Oh, well, it, yeah. well we weren't done with Bellator. We were going to touch on oh, that okay. still. Okay. We were still going to cover it. Um, but we'll go through the UFC first. Um, but absolutely, congrats to John Fitch. You know you know, I want to congratulate yeah. my boy. I love him. My man. ex-roommate, my teammate for many years, um, and a hell of an opponent, man. And from what it looked like from the highlights, uh, he took... He took some tough shots, hey, man. He had to endure you know, a little bit of punishment to, to Paul, get those takedowns. Paul Do uh, yeah, Paul Daly trained here, too. Yeah, so, he did. I mean, much love to him. I'll, you know, I love them both, but, of course, yeah. I'm going to go with uh, you know, the man. So Absolutely, dude. And, like, I, I saw firsthand that power when he was here. He's got crazy power. And, you know, the thing about He's Paul. 40. And the thing about, is he? Or no, no, I'm Paul Daly. I'm talking about, I'm happy for uh, Fitch. But Paul Daly's 40? No. Oh. So Fitch is 40. Oh, Fitch is 40? Fitch is, like, 39? Really? 40? He's got to be right there with God, us, right? We're getting, no, we're getting so I could be old, off, man. man. It we're, seems like you're probably right. We're pro you're probably right. Um, but I saw firsthand uh, Paul Daly's power, and he has this like abnormal reach because he's not a super tall guy. He's mm -hmm. not that tall, but he has these really long arms, and he, he's really, really good at extending them. Like he kind of like hops forward as he punches. So you'll think he's out of range, and the next thing you know, he's like cracking you with enough power to put you away usually. If not, it's definitely gonna wake you up. And from the highlights of what I saw, ah, fuck it, let's just go into the Bellator. Uh, <laughs> yeah, who cares? <laughs> we're it's already, our show. We already, we already started it, yeah. who fucking cares? So, so It also is almost midnight. Yeah, so, so we'll, we'll just start at the beginning. Uh, a couple of the, the highlights that we saw, Aaron Pico, obviously he's, uh, they call him the phenom and all yeah, that, and, and the kid's living up to it, man. He's doing really good, and the power, he, he has his hands. From the highlights I saw, he looked just absolutely brutal. I mean, the guy was doing like backflips uh, across the ring and like third consecutive first round finish. So yeah, he's doing amazing. That's kind of a bright like, future for that like kid. My old buddy over here used to do. Yeah, I used to roll him up like that back in the days. That was before TV, but yeah, before yeah. TV and <laughs> remote controls. And I remember putting Fire. The VHS in there. The UFC would send us VHS of, uh, of our opponents. No, they did. Tell me they were DVDs. They they were DVDs. Okay. But I will say that the UFC used to send us DVDs of our opponents, and like I now we have to have we have to pay for Fight Pass to to it's watch our 10 opponents. Bucks a month, fourteen ninety nine. You it's know, it's gone up. True story. I uh, when I retired, I used to have free Fight Pass. When, I know I said this in an earlier podcast. I had free Fight Pass when I was in the UFC, and then when I retired, they cut me off the free Fight Pass. That day, huh? It was close after. <laughs> it was like the next billing cycle, <laughs> and I was I was in Australia. Because I was at Soa's fight. I think it was I think it was So or Mark Hunt, one of the two. Um, and I was in Australia, and I wanted to watch a couple of the past fights just to you know to go over a couple of things. And I signed in, and it said you had to pay. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And so I went ahead and paid, and I paid in Aussie dollars. So ever since then, for years, they charged me every month to my PayPal from from Aussie dollars. So huh. yeah, whatever whatever it translates to. I'm sure it's around fourteen fifteen bucks. Thanks, Zufa. Yeah. You'd think after a decade of fighting in the UFC, you'd be able to... Because I can't see my fights anywhere else. So if I, if I wanted to look at my fights and show my daughters or, or show my friends, you can't look at them on YouTube. You have to go to Fight Pass. Yeah. But, I mean, again, it's 14, 15 Maybe bucks. Maybe on some cave drawings, we can see some of your fights. Huh? <laughs> they're black and white. Actually. Hieroglyphics. Yeah. But, uh... Well, they're black and white. No, how do we get so off track? The stone how is. do we get so off track? Oh, so, anyway, right. back to Aaron Pico. Did an amazing job. Uh, from the highlights, again, I'm not going to sit here and try to act like, we're not going to sit here and act like we watched the fight and we know all we this couldn't. stuff. We didn't We couldn't. We'll, we'll be honest with you. Um, another big fight, obviously, John Fitch and, and Paul Daly. I mean, yeah. huge win for, for John Fitch. So proud of him, man. He, I mean, coming off of a win over Jake Shields, then a win over Paul Daly. I mean, those those kind of wins, dude. It's at like this 2007 late, At this late in your career. Yeah. And this is a man that was like number, he was number one next to GSP for like three straight years back mm -hmm. in the day. Um, 
he put he put up a tough fight against GSP. I mean, that was an absolute war. Dude, that, why, they made a documentary about that actually. Why haven't we got Fitch on here yet? I don't know. You but know you, he'll do it. Yeah, yeah, of course he will. And, and yeah, that, that's it. That's that's a good call. Shit, man, you're absolutely yeah. right. We, we definitely we don't need to watch the fight under. if he can break it down for us. Absolutely, you know. And uh, I will say this though: when I first started MikeSwick.com, I was doing these like uh, stories where I was actually writing in my spare time, and I would do interviews with people. And I did an interview with Fitch via um, a recorder, and I recorded the entire interview and deleted it oh. by accident when I was trying to save it. Good work. I was so embarrassed, dude. Like we did the. Uh as a matter of John fact, as a matter of fact, I want to say that it was this fight before. I'm not for sure. I Don't think say GSP. No, 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 no. Uh, this is way, way after that. I want to say it was before the, the Shields fight, but I don't know for sure. But I felt so bad, man. So, two, two big mistakes since my uh, whole like media career, and one of them was that, and the second one was this, this episode coming up with John Wayne Parr. But we'll explain that later. But it, it's an. I will say this: it was one of the best. We looked at each other after the podcast. And was what, what did we say? This is the best. <laughs> Literally, we said that it, it was. It's an hour and a half with John Wayne Parr, and, it, it and we talked like was, about everything. But it was it, it was so nice. It seemed like it was twelve minutes long, and he he told some stories that we couldn't actually believe he told. You know, and yeah. It's that's. But the, but yeah. he he told it how it is, and yeah. and, and real he shit. He didn't around. hold nothing back, mm -hmm. dude. About Thailand, about his career, about where he is, where he's going. Um, and he's still knocking it out. Speaking of Bellator, see how we tied it in? Yeah. He's still knocking it down. So, so back, he just signed up with a uh, Back four, to Bellator. Yeah, John Wayne Parr just signed a four-fight right. deal with Bellator. Anyway, you guys and, can and again, watch it. That. That's going to post on Monday. So so just one more day, and then you'll be able to see that podcast. Absolutely amazing podcast. And you'll see what we're talking about. The the little technical problem that we had. But anyway, um, so then there was the uh, Paul Day fight against uh, John Fitch. John Fitch did an outstanding job. Another win for AK. Another win for John Fitch. Huge win for John Fitch. We'll see where that puts him. Um, I think he's in a position right now with all that he's done in his career. He should be taking these big fights, you know, these these kind of high-profile money fights, not maybe against your up-and-coming young 25-year-old, you know, but I'm talking about your big known, you know, guys like Jake Shields, guys like Paul Daly in that same kind of mm -hmm. realm and, and make good money, man. I mean, this is a guy who's put his time in. He's a legend of the sport. He's, he's a living legend of the sport. And he's beating people like Jake Shields and Paul Daly right now, like yeah. at 40, if he's 40. I mean, I, I, I don't doubt it. I mean, I think he is a little bit older than me, so he might be. And it just looks like an absolute beast. And, and he trains so hard. And he's one of those guys, you know, not knocking him at all, but we've always said it in, in the gym that, you know, he's accomplished everything he's accomplished from hard work. He never came into the gym and had, like, extraordinary power, extraordinary uh, Muay Thai or techniques with his striking uh even bjj i remember his first day bjj i was i was in bjj and drug him into bjj and then he stayed there and was doing two classes a day until he got his black belt and i think he he did it he got his black belt in like a record amount of time with uh dave camarillo so it's just hard work he just worked mm -hmm. his fucking ass off. he's a reg i would say he's a regular hard-working guy who, who went into a gym to be a fighter worked his ass off and became the number one fighter for literally i'd say close to three years the only guy he couldn't beat is GSP, and no one's been able to beat GSP. Yeah. GSP's beat every man he's, he's ever fought. Now, still. I, even the two people that's beat him, he's beat him back, you know? And uh, so and then in the main event, obviously, uh, Ryan Bader fought uh, <coughs> King Mo. Uh, I, I, I picked Bader. I that lasted I, a long I, time. Yeah, I picked Bader overall, but I did think that King Mo put up a good fight. I like King Mo, he, and and I consider him a friend. Yeah, I've trained him a few times, and he's a really good guy when you sit and talk to him and, and get to know him. He's kind of ha he has kind of a different persona on, on the internet and this whole like King thing. But like it, as a person, he's a really good guy. And uh, didn't he just sign he's went, with Fifty Cent? He's went 50 through a lot. Cent like Fifty that. Cent's doing some kind of deal with Bellator, I think, in general. Yeah. I think I it, King Mo's his boy or whatever, but. I don't know like how close they are what the deal is, but I, that might be the end. But but I think Bellator and, and Fifty Cent's doing some kind of collaboration thing or something. I don't know for sure, but um, I will say that um, that that didn't go like I expected. I didn't think it was going to be what was it fifteen seconds or something? If that, yeah, that. I, I mean, you can see the generous. whole fight. So we did we yeah. did see that whole fight mm -hmm. thanks to Instagram in a meme. What, what it was? Yeah, it was in a, is that what they're called? Man, and, and the, it was weird because the way he caught him, it didn't even look like he really caught him. It looked like he hit him in the chest. Yeah, but again, it did. We, 
don't have the benefit of looking at it. You know, they showed us one yeah. replay, and that's all we got. So. But I will say from knowing King Mo, he's not the type of guy yeah, he that's going to fall down. Yeah, no, dude. Your nose all the way down. He got, he got hit hard, for sure. Hands down, he got hit hard. Um, so that sets up the... Uh, so that's Bellator. And, uh, and speaking of Bellator, uh, Anastasia and... Uh, a huge card is coming up yeah. in Bellator 200. I leave here in a week. Yeah, you uh, do. Leaving me. We've been, Leaving we've your been boy. training hard. Anastasia's coming back after a year. Uh, Anastasia Yankova, I'm speaking of. Uh, she was on the podcast in our very last podcast. Um, check that out if you haven't. It's all in English. It's her first English conversation. She talked about everything, showed her artwork, showed her tattoos. Well, talked about her tattoos, uh, her career, her health, everything. You'll get to know Anastasia for the first time in the English speaking world i guess um and she's fighting k jackson and then uh, there's there's a uh, lot of i mean crow Mike, cops on that card crow I mean, cop, michael venom page it's, it's amazing card and it's in london Usasi. may 25th yeah, yeah it's it's decent so we're getting ready to go to that we're gonna leave her on sunday um exactly a week from today um so what are, what are we gonna do about some podcasts so I'm, i think i'm gonna take <clears throat> take some of the stuff and, and try to do some kind of like follow-up uh throughout the week of her getting ready for the fight you're taking the land it's kind of heavy, man, dude. I, I feel bad for those guys when they're bringing this thing up here, dude. I can't even move this mug. I think it's huge. So anyway, so yeah, big Bellator coming up, Bellator 200. Um, stay tuned for that. We're going to keep you updated with that. Now let's get back to UFC 224. Yeah. And Not too bad. Oh, where do we start? Well, I mean, Jesus, I can't believe we're starting with this fight. So yeah, this, what, what a crazy fight to great. start in, with. In Brazil, too, you figure this would be a little higher up, but... Machida versus Belfort. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, and I got... I think we both picked this one right. Um, yeah. I and mean, we picked it right as we're watching it. I mean, we, yeah. we kind of knew exactly what was probably going to happen. Vitor Belfort, he's, he's been the best at landing punches and bunches, you know? And, and he's where I got my style from. I, I idolized this guy growing up. I mean, my style, I've gotten almost every knockout in the, my early career because of B Vitor Belfort. Like, watching his fights over and over and over and wanting to feel that feeling of just knocking somebody out with... 50 punches. Oh, you shit. Know? What was it? His first UFC fight in like 97? He was it's 18? Crazy, dude. I was, in, I was in high so school. With, yeah. I was with you. And well, we were watching him in football. Yeah. You weren't in football, obviously. You were in like cheer camp or whatever. But Cheer camp. I was in football. And, yeah, and banging we were, cheerleaders. We were in off season and we were watching UFCs and stuff. And I was like, I'm going to be in there one day. And everybody's like, shut up, Swig. There's no way you're going to be in there. They thought you meant in the game. Not in the oh, UFC. Oh, well, yeah. I wasn't in that either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in the game, but I did make the UFC. We played the same, but I, I lost a battle. I won the war. I so, played basketball, as you can clearly see. Yeah. yeah. So, what you talking about today? What happened? We, anyway. So, um, anyway, so, so Vitor Belver was a big inspiration for me, and, uh, and, and his style is punches and punches, and that's what he's the best at. And he went up against a guy who's didn't help the that hardest tonight, guy in the world to do that against, a guy who moves so unorthodoxly huh? is that a word well not that slow but yeah Unor unorthodoxly well, it wasn't slow what about that kick to the face buddy oh my god and let me tell you something i know you like that one well you saw my reaction yeah, exactly. we, we got to start filming our reaction to these fights we, we got that's what we got to do yeah, and gotta, we're watching them in here now so we can just like put the camera right here and, and film our reaction but you gotta wear pants during these fights if you're gonna be on yeah video. no dude I, I just yeah the underwear <laughs> thing wasn't you were you, wearing underwear cool. Oh, you you didn't even see I was wearing underwear. No. Oh know. yeah, you, they were really small. You could no. you could totally tell. I should have moved down a little bit so you what could see. What flavor were they? I'm sure they were edible. I wonder why you were so happy. <laughs> I like tiny. Penis. Anyway, so yeah, obviously those, those of you probably saw it. If you didn't see it, oh my God, Machida landed the most amazing. I, I'm gonna go with Teep Kick. He may call it the Karate Kung Fu Machida Kick, um, but since he may since, not call it that, since I'm. Uh, you know, I have a Muay Thai gym here in Thailand, and that's it, it, a that's a it's classic. It's effective, man. How many times we see it? Classic Muay Thai in, in Muay kick Thai, to the man. face, and it's crazy that Anderson Silva did the same kick uh, to Vitor Belfort, and it's been I, it's been, not only has it been. Though? Am I wrong though? Sorry, hold on. Did so Machida did it left footed, and did Anderson do it right? I don't know. Or do you remember? I don't remember. That was literally seven years. But ago. But it was on the cover of the game. I mean, it, I mean, yeah. this thing was like it was just like everywhere. Everywhere. Iconic, and then he got two. And then now there's this one. So, I mean, B Vitor must just be like, man, this mm. is the worst thing that could ever happen. I mean, he's probably still like, because I know how Luke felt when he fought Vitor and he, and he got kicked in the head, and it wasn't even near that bad. And, yeah. and people kept throwing, you know, the fans, how brutal they are. They kept throwing those pictures up, and every time you say anything, they want to try to bring you down. Like, I'm sure Vitor went through hell with that first one with Anderson Silva. And to finish his career with another one like that, man, 
I mean, you know that's going to be happens, played man. over and over again. And Machida's not done fighting either. So that's going to be the, the, the front of his highlight video for every single UFC fight from here on out. So that was brutal, man. Um, and, and like I said, Vitor Belfort was my big inspiration. Through the years, I have to be honest. I'm going to be real as I can. Things changed a little bit. You know, I, I didn't really like the way he uh, handled his steroid situation, to be honest. Uh, not, I mean, I, I don't think you should take steroids and fight people who aren't on steroids. And But if you do. If you do, like Chelsonen and, and some of these other people, and you own it, and, and just I have much more respect for you. Yeah. I think when you're when you're leaning towards religion and being self righteous, and then making all these excuses yeah. and all this kind of stuff, I, 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 it completely lost me as a big fan. Of I his. didn't know it was in my water. Look at me, I've drank a lot of water. I just yeah, I'm, I'm not, not accidentally I'm not trying to bag on him, man. I hate bagging on fighters. And like I said, he he went from lit, and I'm saying this out of my heart. He, he literally went from my biggest inspiration ever to like losing all respect just just from the way he handled it i can't remember some of the comments he made during a couple of those situations but i was just like man again that's not a bad it. human being for no, 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 but, but if you are gonna cheat you know just own up to it fuck it you know and 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 if if you're gonna cheat don't be so religious don't 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 uh, hey you know i mean it's it's just it's just not right to sit there and act like if, the, if you really are religious and you think there is a god up there and he's he he does good God didn't do steroids. He's not going to help you cheat. It's just not going to happen. He's not going to help you cheat against a guy who's not cheating and who's fair and who's earning it and who's busting his ass the right way to, to win his mm. career. You know, he's not going to do it. He's going to, if there's a, if there's a God up there, I'm not, like I said before, I'm not that religious. I know there's something up there. I don't know what it is. Um, but if there is something up there that, that helps people, I think he's going to help the people that deserve it. And and I don't think if you're down there cheating, he's going to give you much attention, to be honest. And, and I'm getting off track. I'm trying to build hate towards the guy. Like, it, I'm saying just from the heart, from somebody who really idolized this guy, it, it changed a lot over that situation. So I wasn't well, happy to see him is, get man, knocked see out or almost anything. almost like a, a childhood hero, and that's the whole point of why that people don't want yeah. professional. And it sends a bad message steroids. to the kids, right? And it kind of hurts your feelings a little bit. You it can did. say that. It's it did. not like, it you did. know, yeah. you're a grown man, obviously. I'm not you, bashing you know. on him, and I don't, I'm not 100% saying uh, I enjoyed seeing him get knocked out. That was brutal. I felt really yeah. bad for that. That was a, that, that was a sickening uh, knockout. But on the same side, uh, I've trained with Machida, and, Mach and Machida's actually hurt my arm before I fought him. Uh, uh, Yushin Okami. I mean, he, oh, well, fuck him then. he destroyed my arm with that flip kick and I blocked it and he bent my arm backwards and my whole elbow was completely swollen. I remember I was so upset about it, but I absolutely love Machida. Yeah. He used to come to oh, AK all great. the time. He would train with his old brother before a lot of his fights. And Are they twins? N no, They've but they, gotta be. they have a weird ear. Like on TV, you can't really see it, but in real life, they have a very eerie, like they look alike. In, in a weird way it's they they have like a lot of similarities it's weird man and, like and he's shorter and he's not as big what's the difference between me and my twin brother chris talks to chicks that's and, it huh really 23 years and that's the difference between us i don't know dude y'all y'all look close to the same i mean i think y'all look close to the same i think when you put your new glasses on that you got you're right there with uh you had to bring up my glasses huh? tom cruise dude i got them over there you should put, just pop those things on you should pop them on and see what the... I'm going to get made fun yeah. of. Yeah. Leave a comment and say if you don't think these make him look like a fucking stud. Look at that, dude. Look at this guy. I look guy. like a dickhead now, I think. Well, you got your cap turned backwards. You had your hair slicked back like G-Eazy when you came in before. How's it now? It's not slicked back, but... It's terrible. Right. But even with that off, dude, I think it looks cool, dude. I think it's a nice style. I think it's a nice style. Leave a comment. Let him make him feel good. This is not a good idea. It's a little between Robert Downey Jr. and maybe G Easy without the glasses. Yeah, I don't know who. No, no, I'm talking about when you had the hair slicked back, all uh, like in no, your skinny frame. But um, <laughs> anyway, I love Machida. Wow. So it was good to see Machida win. He was very respectful. The second he landed that kick, he didn't come in and try to bash him up or anything. He knew exactly. He paid respect yeah, he just to respect, him. Bow down yeah, to him. He's a great guy. He's cool, man. Great guy. We saw him out in, uh, remember, California, in yeah. LA after yours. Yeah, he's a great guy. Really great guy. So it was fun. Couldn't yeah. have, I mean, if you're going to get a knockout like that, which I'm sure was knockout of the night, I didn't see any of the. I don't know. We barely had time to watch the fights, but uh, I'm sure that was knockout of the night for sure. Um, and, and and speaking of another knockout, Lineker, yeah. hands of hands of stone, right? Same Hand, as uh, well, Sam Stout. Well played, yeah. Him and uh, Bri Hel Helleher? Helleher? Yeah. Hellinger? I, shit, I'm probably saying it wrong. I apologize. Yeah. But, but uh, wow. That was 
quite yeah. the onslaught there for the. I think he landed that. Uh, he took some I think shots. Was a, I think the final one was that. I think it was a left hand that came right through okay. the. Yeah, and I mean, he, he, he touched just, him up oh. nine different times. So. Yeah, he was pretty rocked. And, I didn't uh, know he won. Now is it nine of his last ten? I know he won yeah. eight of his last nine or something. You know, like I, that. I know a lot. I, mean, I used to watch obviously Lenneker a lot and, uh, and and follow his career and stuff, but I didn't know he was on that much of a. Yeah. A streak there. You know, I think that's the There's problem. There's so many is, fighters now. You know, what it is also too is you got big stories like Conor McGregor throwing shit through buses and, and that takes guys away. doing yeah. You know, and you start watching those and headlines and then you miss all these you, others. You miss the, the good shit, you know. And you know, yeah. I mean, it happens, but anyway. But yeah, obviously, great knockout, um, which was nice. Yeah. Get these fights moving along so we can finish our show. You yeah, know? keep going. So, uh, I mean, well, go not ahead. Much to say on that, Robert Downey Jr. Go to that next one. Uh, Lead us through, Iron Man. Let's do it. See, now now i got to use him to read, you dickhead. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, Mackenzie Dern. Yeah. 7.4 pounds over against Amanda Cooper. Now, look. Here's my theory. I I love when women get big. You know that. (laughs) But if you're going to miss weight by almost going into another weight division, that's complete bullshit. I think. I think. Male, female. I I think it all depends on you. I've always I've always felt that way too with you, um, and then I had issues with people that that had medical situations and stuff. And like, there's all kinds of things. And as long as people agree and they understand what's going on, I've never been with a fighter that 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 signed a contract, be it a catch weight or a regular weight, that missed that weight by more than that much. maybe a pound or something like no, that we've or had two some, or whatever the case. We've had some Thailand. Remember I don't even think two, to be honest. kilo, remember that? But when you miss by what? seven pounds, 7. you don't 4. accidentally do that. That's just kind of like you just don't care. Well, she lost 30% of her purse. I mean, it's one thing to know you're going to miss weight a month before, talk to your opponent, do a catch weight, agree to a catch weight. Then if you miss that one, that's even worse, but, but maybe you miss by a pound. You tried your best. You killed yourself to make it a pound or something, you know, whatever. But to just show up, the, you know, Amanda Cooper was cutting. She was trying to make weight. Mm. She did make weight. She did. She did uh, her job. She did her job, and, and she was struggling. And you just show up like, ah, I'm seven pounds over. And, and you know, to I don't want to say show any remorse. Maybe that's the bad word. But, okay, now for those who don't know anyway, she she got her with a great overhand right, knocked McKenzie her down. Mackenzie Dern did win. Yeah. And she she didn't make did weight, but she did win. And choker. she won on the feet, which – I guess you can argue no, to she say choked she, she choked her. I mean, yes, well, she, well, she, yeah, it started on the feet and went to the ground. I, well, I'll break it down. Every go fight ahead. does. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll finish breaking. Well, it down. here's my theory. Um, yeah, you choked her out. Congrats. You know, I'm sure you would have done that even if you didn't lose or uh, not cut weight. But we'll never know. Yeah. You know. And my theory is, if you won, she should have stood up and just been like, "All right, look, I did it. Sorry, Amanda." You know. But for her to run around the ring and like cartwheel or whatever the fuck she was doing that's like come on man yeah you didn't make weight you did not hit the exact qualifications you needed to to fight in that fight or even come close that's like and and, and and the biggest thing is is like it's one thing if someone kills herself to make weight and and they're getting carried out there and they're dead they're yeah. sucked up they're dry the the medical team saying that they're unfit to cut or to continue there's some pity there right i mean there's some yeah. there's a little bit of pity there but like when you like just show up don't care you look perfectly fine. You're happy. You're smiley. You know, you're not, you clearly have weight you could lose. Then it's a little different. And, and I will say she did win. I mean, pretty much win the fight on the feet. She landed that huge overhand, right? Um, usually that doesn't make a big difference with the weight. I mean, maybe a little bit of power, but I think her weight wasn't, wasn't muscle. I think it was fat. But what did they weigh? But when they went to the ground, it wasn't True. just seven point four. It could have if been thirteen cut, pounds. Who could've knows? She could have she could have cut to that seven pounds. Because she looked. I mean, she did look big. I, you know, I don't want to dog a woman's image. But I will say this: when, when you're a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and you're seven pounds over, which probably would turned into ten or fifteen pounds over, mm. um, that's a huge difference on the ground. And she caught her with that overhand right, which kind of knocked her out, but it definitely rocked her. Instead of coming in with punches, she she came in and and, and used her jits on the ground. Amanda Cooper didn't have a chance. I mean, you're talking about a girl that was way bigger, way stronger, and way more talented on 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 the ground. And in that case, yeah, there's nothing she right. could do. She got rear naked choke. She lost the fight. Um, I mean, yeah, inter- entertaining, you know. But still, I guess it is what know. it is. It's a it's a thin line, you know. I I think, in my opinion, I mean, it, I, 
I was hoping, and this is another thing, John Anik came out there and he said, uh, we'll get, I want to talk about your weight, but first we're going to talk about this. And he never got back to the weight. I just wanted to know kind of what it was. I mean, was there an issue? You know, she made weight in her fight before that, but, uh, well, apparently she missed her flight to the thing too. I mean, and that's what Amanda was saying, how unprofessional she is. She misses weight. She misses her fight. I mean, a flight. Um, it's, you know, she I mean, missed 30% of her fight purse. Yeah. I hope she got submission of the night and then lost 30% that too. to her. But the thing is, is, uh, yeah. And, and, and I remember Amanda Cooper put something out with like a, this like graphic with a cookie saying, so apparently Mackenzie Dern, this ain't the first time she's had weight issues or, or, you know, I haven't followed her as much to know about the she, weight situation, it, but, but Amanda Cooper, Amanda Cooper did but. say she was going to put a cookie in front of her door every night so that she'd get 20% of her fight purse. But she, I guess she didn't know you get 30%. So that was a, Unfortunately for her, she lost the fight, but she probably made a ma- the same she amount made as if she won. If she would have won, she probably made at least her win money, probably because she made all of her show and then thirty percent of win and show from her. Yep. So I mean, I'll, hopefully in the long run, she still got paid. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, she lost the fight. What can you do? It is what it is. This happens all the time. I mean, it's part of the sport. People miss weight. Uh, Kevin Lee did it, but not by seven and a half pounds. But not by seven and a half pounds. That that's that's almost unexcusable. That's four watermelons. It's one watermelon, maybe. No, it's not. Not in Thailand. These little tiny ones? Oh, the little ones. Okay. Oh, you're talking about the... Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't eat watermelon. What's a gallon of water? 2.8 pounds. No. 4.16 ounces. They're like... It's like 7 pounds. No way. A gallon of water? water, 7 pounds? I'm pretty sure. Bullshit. Uh, I'm pretty sure. It can't be that much. It's not like I weigh... What would that be? Why would you compare yourself to... uh, It's a gallon of water. It's... It'd be or like, milk or whatever. What is it now? So, be, I guess it would weigh. I think milk's heavier than water. Yeah. You know, I forgot Coke, what it is. A milk. A diet coke weighs less than a regular coke. Maybe it was a gallon of milk weighs weighs seven pounds. A gallon of paint, maybe. It ain't two pounds. I guarantee you. So if you guys, it ain't seven comment, pounds. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear us talk about uh, <laughs> how much how much a gallon weighs. Are we really fighting over this right now? I'm kind of curious. Don't touch me. I'm just letting you know that this little thing down. Yeah, there's. I got you. I got you. Anyway, all right. So go ahead. Let's go to this next fight real fast. I know you yes, want to leave. Yes, uh, let's enough gallon vanting. <laughs> That's a gallivant and gallon joke. Anyway, I get it. So speaking of, you like those glasses? Gallon, now. Well, now now I so I can see the board. But yeah. Anyway, um, what b- b- board? What are you talking about? You said you're bored. I'm said I'm bored. Yeah. If, oh, okay. if you're talking about weights of waters. <laughs> um, anyway, so Kevin Gastelum fought. Uh, Souza? I always feel like I say that wrong. Just say Jacare. But I like his last name. Souza. Souza? Yeah. Like Sousaphone? Just say Jacare. John Philip Souza invented the Sousaphone, by the way. But you didn't know that. I which, will Google which became that. Later on, became the two. Because I know you're right, and I hate, I hate when you know <laughs> shit like this. So stupid. This is, this is, uh, this is why Netflix is so popular and making so much money because of guys like you that just sit around and watch dumb documentaries about dumb watch shit dumb i like to read and i, I write you and i re- share you ain't, when's the last time have you, you read, read, a read book? my travel blog where i oh. share my experiences with everybody oh be still me you know what the last book i read was yeah tv guy trapped in death cave when what? you were fucking junior high trapped in death yeah. cave what the look fuck at is that? what google the hell it. are you reading when google it anyway wow. All right, well, let's go back to Gastelum winning that fight. Okay, so, okay, so. so <laughs> <laughs> take some obviously, weird turns. Obviously, Jacare won that, that first round. Yes. There was no doubt about yes. that. Yes. And obviously. Obviously, Kevin, Kevin won the second, the second round. round. There was no doubt about that, I thought. On the count of three, tell me who you think won the third round. Okay. One, two, three. Jacare. Okay. So, yeah. But guess what? Guess who didn't think uh, um, Jacare won that third the round? The two judges, because it was a yeah. split decision. Yeah. Uh, I. I don't know, man. I mean, it. Uh, no, again, I'm not, not taking anything away from from uh, from Kevin. Now, I will say I do like Kevin as a fighter, and and I I was impressed with his performance. And I will say that was a hell of a fight. I mean, they, it was back and forth, great. And buddy, for 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 I keep going with Jack Ray because I don't want to. <laughs> I know you can't say anything else. <laughs> uh, for him to be so kind of tired and fatigued, he, I will say two things on that. First, I want to talk about the arm bar. That arm bar at the end of the round. Um, he had that arm bar, I think. You brought up a good point. You think that's what tired him out. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think that's part of what tired him out. And I think uh, he had a good position on that arm bar because of the cage. 
what happened okay so when you put an arm bar to get out of the arm bar you're gonna have to get to the side of your opponent and stack your opponent and pull your arm out the same side as your arm yeah you're gonna go to the opposite side so if this is the arm that's so caught, he's, he's you're going to want to go around that way. Yeah, well, the, yeah. Okay, and you're going to want to stack your opponent. But I mean. the problem was the cage was in the way. So he was in a great position to stop that from happening. So if he could get a good angle and he had the strength to break that grip, he could have got that arm bar. So I think he was really trying. He, he saw he was in a good position. I think he was putting everything he had into getting that arm bar. And then uh, I think probably that 10-second, you know, clapper went. And so then he knew – and then you can you can kind of see he let go of it kind of at the end. I think he he kind of just let go of it. I, I think I think he had a way better armbar than what what most people thought. I think if that I, I honestly think if that fight had went a minute longer, he could have possibly finished that armbar. In my opinion, I think the reason he let go was the fact that that he knew the round was over and he was his arms were blown out. Um, I think it was accumulation of things, but he definitely was tired. And I will say I'll give him credit on the fact that especially in that third round, um, <sighs> as tired as he it was. was Th this was, shows you the yeah. differences of, of these guys that are seasoned, that have had a lot of fights, and and that have been tested through time, and know that their body can do more than what their mind can do. Right? Th that's that's a, the the dilemma you have when you're coming up as a young fighter, is you don't realize that your body can do so much more than than what your mind thinks it can do, and he he obviously was exhausted, and where a lot of people would crumble and let that affect him. I mean, you saw the third round. Yeah, we we thought he won the second round. Second win, adrenaline, whatever. I mean, he's it was. landing Heart. strikes. He he's going after it. I mean, he's still going. I mean, he's still dangerous. And I thought he won the. I thought he was going to win the second round. I thought he won the second round, and I thought he was going to win the fight. And then when it was a split decision, I was even surprised by that. No, no, Gaslam won the second round. <clears throat> You're thinking. No, no, no. Did I say that? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I. I, I I agree with you on the the Jack Ray the first round, uh, Kevin on the second yeah. round. But but I thought uh, Jack Ray was going to win the fight. Uh, for sure, yeah, when so it went to I. the decision, and I and I was actually surprised it was a split decision, um, and I still thought as they were calling out the names, Jack it was Ray still too immediately. I still thought it was going to go to Jack Ray as a split decision, which I still didn't even think was a split decision. To be honest with you, I really thought he did win that first round mm -hmm. and that third round, and then uh, they gave it to Kevin, and you know, hats off to him. I'm not going to say he he had a horrible fight and didn't deserve. You know, it's one of those fights. When it's a close fight. I mean, th these things happen, and he fought a really good fight. I mean, he, he's a tough kid. I mean, he, he he's he's durable, and he didn't even tire until till the third round. I mean, he he was he was trucking along, man. And like, I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes when I'm judging these fights, and it does go to a decision, I always maybe subconsciously, whatever, I've, or not obviously subconsciously, I forget that octagon control has something to do with it. Yeah. Now I don't remember enough from that fight. We only saw it that one time. Right to actually say that, but the judges only see it once too. So I, I, sometimes I don't factor in octagon control. Maybe I just don't realize it. Maybe I don't, maybe I don't care, you mm -hmm. know, but it's, um, I don't know, maybe that played a factor and I just didn't really notice. Well, I'll tell you where the octagon control uh, played a factor was in that last fight with. Uh, Ooh, good transition, buddy. Yeah. So we'll go well, to. We, uh, we might as well just jump into that one next yeah, anyway. Yeah. So we, we've already, we got a lot to talk we, about We've that already one. said that Kevin won that fight anyway. It was yeah. a good decision. But, but that fight, so uh, Amanda just, Nunes. But before, hold on. Right before we start this, i got to say, have you noticed that, that clapper you said at 10 seconds? That's not a 10 seconds anymore. It's like at 11 and a half or 12. Just watch it from here on out. That's going to blow your mind. I swear to God, it's at 12 seconds now. But either they're fucking I, with I me. I hate when you say this stuff because you're delay. always right. You're always right about everything. And like, it just really pisses me off. because you. It's, it has it. to be accurate, though. And I'm watch, man. It's I want to say that there's no way you can be right about. It throws this. me off. It really does. Like as a as a fighter, like and you're myself, watching the timer. Yeah, maybe that timer's off. Because I actually look forward to the clapping. I know that sounds not. I don't look for that. Sounded really stupid, but <laughs> I, I don't look forward to. it, But I'm not like. I, I'm 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 trying to picture or if think you ever in my fought head, an MMA fight, you definitely look forward to that clapper. But you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm kind of looking like okay. The, as soon as they know there's ten seconds left, I like to see what they want to do. Mm. So as soon as they, and I always end up looking at the thing, but it's like. 11.5, 12 seconds. I'm just, just throwing it out there. Maybe I'm wrong. But Maybe you know. they assume by the last clap will be 10 seconds. Ooh. It's interesting. That's, Ooh. A, that's a good point of like when, how many times do they clap? Can you tell me that? Three, isn't it? I don't know. I'm asking you. are the specialist on the fucking clapper. Well, I don't have a chart at home that says. And then I wonder if they start it. They must start it. You're probably right. Because I think it's right at 10. It's you're probably right. They probably start it so that it ends and you have 10 more seconds. Because if not, then that would be, you would have like, what six or seven seconds? 
I don't know. That's a fun fact right there. Huh? Man, we, we find some weird little... I need to find out that and if in the down. UFC if women wear cups. I know we've discussed it, but I still don't... I don't it, is Ill, it is illegal to wear a cup as a female in the UFC. Unified rules. If you Google it, you'll see the very top uh, result will be John McCarthy explaining it through his new updated unified rule system, whatever. Yep. Wow. They do make female cups, and in Muay Thai, they do wear female cups. Well, you got to wear one in... And I don't know about amateur and all that kind of stuff, but in the UFC, they are forbidden. You ca- you cannot wear a female cup. Now I don't know about uh, maybe some kind of protection up here. You might have like you no, might because we've seen girls get their shit you know pulled down and. But it could be a choice. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think the only time you'd need protection up there is if maybe things aren't so if natural. I'm fighting a girl. Well, I mean, if things aren't so natural and you're worried about a, I, a mishap. I do not like augmented breasts. I'm just saying, like, not true, I if them. I had them and I was a female, I wouldn't want to take a full punch to one. I can tell you right now, if I was a female, I'd have them. Are we talking about punching fake breasts right now? Oh, I love fake breasts. Is that where we're at right yeah. now? I'm just curious. Is, that, is that really where we're at? Huge fan. Huh. Remember, I'm a fan. You're the fighter. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of big tits. What do you want me to do? Well, all right. Bigger where, where were we there? before we started talking about punching oh, right. fake tits? Uh, we're about to move to the next fight. Nunez versus... Well, we already Huntington. did move into that fight. And yeah, uh, I was it. saying that that was a good uh, example of octagon control. Um, I think everybody scored Nunez winning that entire thing. Sometimes I, oh, I, I, I think she We got, knew that going in. I think she got at least a 1-10-8 round. And, and man, she, she destroyed I, her I, legs. I, I do beginning. want to bring up a good... How you brought up right before the fighters came and actually touched gloves and started the fight. Uh, I believe it was John Annick said that... Um, in order for Pennington to win this fight, she's going to have to fight the fight of her life. Yeah. Now, obviously, tell them what you meant by that because I thought it was actually a really good point. So, if, if Yeah. Uh, John Anik was right. She, she was going to have to fight the fight of her life to, to win this fight. Um, but I just it, – it's crazy to be in a position where you're a champion fighter and, and the person that you're fighting – is an I think she was like a she was eight to one and, underdog yeah, or something. And nine and crazy. Six. Yeah, I mean I think with the, with I mean that that's the bantamweight division. That's that that was where the the female uh, MMA in the UFC started. That that right. that was the pack division that that you had to be in to be a female fighter in the UFC at one time, and now it's to a point where you're fighting a girl who's who's that much of an underdog, and she's not like a, a late replacement. Ta- uh, a 10th ranked fighter or 12th ranked fighter mm. she was the number two number fighter two. with a nine and six record and and an eight to one underdog i think and and what so that's she hadn't won a fight easy to me 2016? and hasn't won a f- yeah hadn't won a fight in two years come on i mean that i just feel like there should have been someone else and like i'll be honest with you like i told you during the fight um I would love to see Amanda Nunes versus uh, Cyborg. Yes. I would love for them to meet and somehow make weight and meet in the middle or whatever and, and have a fight because that's got to be next. I mean, it has. I want to see that aggression from Amanda meet that aggression of, of Cyborg because I think that would be good. I, I think we were going into the octagon control. That was a fight where that octagon control of what you're talking about. I mean, yeah. she completely well, she was controlled. She was smashing her too. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah. um, you know. But Pennington's back was on the cage yeah. the entire fight. Exactly. Um, now, I will say this though, to have that octagon control and to be so powerful and to be so aggressive, I don't think Amanda Nunes used it to the best of her ability. It's also I, like she said, one of her friends. So And that too. But if it was one of her friends, I mean, she beat she, the shit out of well, her Well, because, okay, you know, for those who don't know this, in the fourth round, or I'm sorry, after the fourth round, and I want to get your take on this, what you would do, and mm-hmm. I know you know what I'm talking about. Um, she turns and tells her coaches, I'm done. I don't want to fight anymore. I'm done. Pennington. Yeah. And, you know, the I... The coach talks her, and actually, the coach basically says, said no. no. Tough shit. Yeah. He says, tough it up I know it hurts, fight. just do it, yeah. Now, I, 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 from what I think you would do, knowing you forever, I, I would say that if, like if I was fighting for you, and mm-hmm. I turned and said, look, Mike, I'm done. You're going to look at me. You're like, are you sure? You're 100% sure because, you know, you may regret it. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what you're going to say. Roughly something along that. Now, I'm not a female fighter either. So I think that may play into it as well. But, you know, what would you do in that situation? If you had, if you had your female fighter, she's obviously getting smoked on the feet right mm-hmm. now. You know, what? It doesn't even matter what's going on out there. But are you saying about you or well, another me, fighter? Well, me, you tell me to go fuck myself. I get that. I'd probably but, talk you into going out there and, yeah. and letting you go a little longer. Like I would ever give up <laughs> or fight. But 
here's the situation. It doesn't matter what's going on out there. It doesn't matter how the fight's going. If your fighter, me as a corner, and you know, I mean, I have a good record with my, my fighters when I'm in their corner. 86% of the time you win. I know you're good with numbers. But, yeah. but when, I, when I work corners and, and, and train fighters, we win a lot of the time. And I'm going to tell you, if I have a fighter come to me in between the rounds and say that they're done, it's over. It's over. I might, I might like, you know, confirm it. I might say, are you sure? You, you, you want me to throw the towel in? And it's done. You're going to walk back to the locker room. It's going to be over. Is this what you want? I'll conf- of course, I'll confirm yeah. it. And if she says she's done, it's over. Okay, hold on, hold on. Because there's no way I can know for sure what What's she's the, feeling. 100%. But it's a championship fight. Does Doesn't that make matter. it that much harder? Nope. Doesn't matter? Absolutely not. For, for the, the, the safety of my fighters, yeah, number one. Say, you care about the safety. and Number one. Who gives a shit about a win-loss at one. this point? Number you know, one. And her face, I mean, she was, her nose was broken. looked like two different places. I mean, this girl was And do you me tell you like, why I would do that? Yeah. That fight. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the result why. afterwards. Yeah. That girl bled like she was married she to She went OJ. from a broken nose. She went from a broken nose and, and who knows what other damage to possibly like. She's going to need plastic surgery now yeah. instead of regular surgery. Possibly career and not career, maybe not career ending, but like definitely like visible, uh, you know, you're going to see these scars and, yeah. and, and, and she's going to feel the effects of these, these scars to her nose and like cartilage and, and parts of her pop, probably her eye and her face for the rest of her life. And that all happened because that corner man told her to go back out there and finish this fight. And, yeah. and I think that was absolutely wrong. I think that, fire, I think the, that corner uh, man should be fired and has no business being that corner. And the, I don't know who it is. And I, and the he may thousands be. of fights that you've been part of, seen, trained in, cornered, watched, everything. Um, have you ever seen a fighter I've quit? I've never one time seen a fighter say that either. Um, so no, that, that goes to show you, again. championship fight. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it just means different to me because how many women would love to be in her shoes right now? Let alone be in the UFC. Let alone be in a fucking title fight. And it's. Yeah, but you but understand. Uh, again, I don't I know what's going on in her things. head. It's the either. safety of the fighter, number one. Number two, if she turns around, and she's already said she quits, so it's already there, right? Yeah. You don't have to see her get busted Mentally, up anymore. Mentally, she's already done, no matter what yeah, right. you say. It doesn't change anything. Okay. All, all she's going to be doing now is being frustrated and, and going out there and doing worse. Um, now, to go back to what you're saying about um, not deserving to be there because she's quitting or whatever the case, if that's the case... Uh, you still take care of your fighter for her safety, so that mm. you know she doesn't get hurt any worse. The UFC and the world saw what she said, yeah. so so they still have the right to cut her and say, you know what, we gave you a championship fight. We went and saw the the effects of your uh, X ray or, or the results of your X ray, and and, and you, this is all that was there. It wasn't that big of a deal. People have fought through this before. You shouldn't have quit. You're out. They have that right to do that. So that can still happen without her going back out there and getting bas- you know, her whole face bashed in. And, and, and you can't tell what's wrong with her. Because she comes and says she's done, she could have any number of problems with her yeah. body that you don't know. You think it's her nose because that's what's bleeding. Yeah. There could be something completely yeah, different. Two crack ribs. She could have something with her yeah. eyes, with her ears, with her head. Be blind. There could be all kinds of problems. You as a coach, you have to look out for your fighters. I, I think in a weird, not a, a twist of fate, maybe not the right term, but... I think the coach is going to get a shit ton of shit for it. Yeah. And she's going to get a lot of love because she's a warrior. She went back out there. She went and finished the fight or whatever. Even though she didn't win, I get it. She still went back out there. And I think she's going to get a lot more love because he made her go back out there than if she just would have quit. I think she would have got a lot of shit. I agree that. with that. I so agree I think with- in a weird way, it's kind of helped her <clears throat> that she's going to have to shit can her fucking manager we'll or, see what those, or uh, those uh, trainer. Re- your medical reports say, but yeah. uh, I'll say this. To have just quit, she went out there and didn't tap when she could have very easily exactly. tapped. Or if she had have told the ref, I'm done or I quit, they would have stopped it immediately. She could have easily just stayed sitting down. She just told the wrong person. If yeah. she had have told the ref it's over, he would have stopped it yeah. immediately. She could have just sat there. And, and when she was out. getting Jamie bashed. Horn did it. Yeah, when I mean, she was we've getting, seen fighters do it. Yeah, when she was getting bashed in the face and blood was pouring out of her nose, she did tough it out. So it's kind of like I'm curious now to see what, what – the situation was. I want to hear from her and find out what was going on because my take is there. There was. Pro- I mean, for her to turn around that fast and say I'm done. I mean, I don't know. Like, if she's done this before, and maybe maybe she's just not cut out to be a, a top level fighter. But maybe there was something that was you know seriously yeah, wrong. Like you said, you never know, man. I mean, it. But how how do you tell a fighter to go out there that's telling you she's done? I bro? think, like I you mean, said, question would be like, Are you sure you want this? 
Yeah. You know, because we go back and like you said, in the locker room, the towel, I mean, it's done. I mean, the fights, yeah. it'll never happen again. So I don't know. Maybe, you know, plus for him to be in that situation, I'm sure he wasn't expecting her to turn around and say that. So I don't know. It's just, I think it's a weird situation. It, I think it's different because normally when a fighter quits, which it happens, you know, no, not dogging them. Um, the camera's not right there to hear that exact moment. Yeah, that was it. crazy. So, I don't know, man. And, and I can touch on that a little bit with my career. With uh, I fought Okami back, you know, a long time ago, and uh, I went back to my corner, and the camera happened to be like right in my face. And we had a certain game plan, uh, me and Bob Cook, to fight Okami, and we didn't know Okami at the time. We didn't know he was the guy who was going to go on to beat Dean Lister. You know, the yeah. Abu Dhabi. Uh, he beat you Anderson know, Silva. No, he didn't beat Anderson Silva. Well, it was a legal up kick. Still got the victory over him. Well, yeah, he did. You're right. He did yeah. beat Anderson Silva. Hey. <laughs> I should have just left it at that. Yeah. Uh, we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't know he he was as strong and as big and as powerful as he he he, he was. He's one of the he was at the time one of the biggest, strongest uh, He's middleweights back there. And he went sure. on to fight Rich Franklin, and he technically, in my opinion, beat Rich Franklin overall. Rich Franklin just landed more points in the beginning with his I think it was like leg kicks or something, and like. It counted for him to win the round kind of thing. But overall, he even technically, in my opinion, beat Rich Franklin. So this was a, a fighter that was very big and very strong. And with our game plan, um, I was letting my corner know that he was big and strong. And, and so when I went back to my corner after the first round, um, I did lose the first round. I went back to my corner um, and I said, because he had done a, a trip takedown or something and stood on, he was on top of me. I couldn't get him off me. And that's when I had that going back to the machita kick yeah. that's when i had that arm to where i couldn't bend and it was it was affecting kind of like my positioning on on getting out of certain positions and i told bob cook i said uh he's really fucking strong and i said that because we needed to change the game plan and that's my corner man he's the man he, mm. that's supposed to tell me what to do and so this whole clinch clinching him to the wall to the knees to the to the game plan that we had wasn't going to work with this guy so I, I needed to circle around more, stay on the feet, avoid the takedown, strike with him. And and he, he gave me my game plan, and I went out there, and I won the second round. So I went out there from saying that he's strong, um, which the camera caught, to winning that last that, that second round where you saw I, I knocked him down, and then I was punching him on the mm -hmm. ground as the bell rang. Ten I more mean, seconds. He got saved by the bell. And then I went in the third round, and then he, he, you know, he ended up getting on top of me for – you know, longer than I was on top of him, and he ended up winning the decision. But I guess eating that raw chicken the day before didn't help <laughs> yeah, either. Yeah, right? another fun story. But uh, <laughs> so the point was, I got <clears throat> ridiculed because I said he was strong. I didn't say I quit or he's too strong for me. Nothing about the sort of like I can't handle him. All I said was he's freaking strong. We have you know we have to change his game plan. And because I said that. Like everybody thought I was like quitting or I, 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 I was like, so I can, what I'm trying to the, say it's is also before Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. So imagine this shit now. That's like what I'm trying like, to say. I can imagine how much, you know, being right on the camera you know? saying I'm done. That's a whole nother it's level, a split right? Second for each person. So it's, it's, I just feel, I kind of feel bad for the trainer. Cause I, I, in my eyes, I think he was doing that just like, look, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. But yeah, but she would, dude. She was getting exactly, smashed exactly, out the whole of course, fight. exactly. So I think. I it's mean, gonna, how would you have seen her win that fight? No, she couldn't have. There's not. I mean, and, and it's not your decision anyway. Yeah. Here's another thing that, that that some people don't realize: when you're a corner man, when you're a coach, you work for the fighter. A lot of people don't realize that because the fighters so, they show so much respect to their coaches. But you can fire coaches in a heartbeat. Oh yeah. You you, you can send them on there. Well, you pay them. They don't pay you. You know what I'm saying? Every coach I've ever had, I've paid. They they work for you. So when you tell, you know, you're the boss. When when you tell somebody that you're done, and you didn't, you're not coming off the, the canvas like you just got knocked out and you're you're out of it. You don't know what you're thinking of, and, and you confirmed it, and and she's changing her mind or something like that. When your boss tells you that you're that she's done, you do what she says, and, and you you. You side with safety, and in my opinion, and, as a corner man, that's what I would do. I, I would I would a, confirm with her if she confirmed a hundred percent that she's done. The towel's going in. We're walking away. Not not taking sides, just as a fan. She could have walked out there two steps, taken a knee, tapped and that's the out. weird thing about it. That's the weird thing about it. Walked away because for her to turn around and tell her corner that she's done, maybe it's respect for her corner. I don't know. But she went out there and she so split fought side. her. I mean, she, she took didn't a do beating. Too terrible until she got taken down. And yeah, then, she did, yeah, she didn't take any opportunity to quit, which, I mean, every MMA fighter must know that you can easily just look at the yeah. ref and quit. Or you can tap, like, especially when, when uh, 
when uh, Amanda took her back and started punching her, bef- even before she, the, the nose started this, blasting. Everybody still would have understood. Two taps. She was bleeding like, fuck. We've seen people fall down and cover up and tap all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's not like a, that wouldn't have been near as bad as quitting and throwing the towel exactly. in or whatever. She would have had more dignity in doing that than, and she didn't. So I'm, I'm confused of this whole situation and I'm, I'm curious to I, see in the I next I think it would be different if it was, days. you know, two rounds to two. It was yeah. a good fight, close, and all that stuff. It was a complete domination. Like yeah. I remember, I said I may have given Pennington the second round. Maybe I don't know if anybody else did or whatever. But yeah, I don't. Other than that, man, I re- b- because of your thing on the octagon control, I give, I give. Yeah. I mean, I knew that's every round. So. I, I think you were. But overall, overall, I think not you a bad put your glasses fight, so. on for the second round. I, I didn't even wear them, but you know, I do look stylish. Yeah. Do you know what? And I hope I don't sound like I'm bagging on Pennington, but she just was outclassed in that fight. Yeah. And, and, and and to be ranked number two, I mean. Buddy, look at the women's division. I mean, you got, you know, Cyborg completely above and beyond everybody in her class. I think they have to meet, man. Amanda Nunes above and beyond anybody in her mm-hmm. class. I mean, you've got uh, Rose and uh, Joanna. They're pretty even, pretty much. But you know, it's Rose 2-0. Oh. What did I say? Joanna. Joanna. What did I say? Joanna. Yeah, it's Joanna, right? Joanna. Oh, stop. I'm pretty sure it's Joanna. It's Khabib, but we never say that. <laughs> anyway. Overall, like I said, good night of fights. I'm glad I got to enjoy them with you, buddy, as always. Yeah, another recap. Um, So, yeah, so this is our opinion on uh, UFC 224 and our take on the highlights of Bellator Bellator, 199. So we look forward to 200. Guys, if if y'all know of any way for me in Thailand, because I'm I'm not going to London. Nothing illegal. Actually, I don't give a shit. As long Uh, as I can watch the fight, let me know. (laughs) There you go. But, yeah, because we cannot see Bellator in Thailand. You'll be there. No, I know, but I'm not, for the 200, I'm yeah. just saying from now on. Oh, yeah, yeah, We can't see Bellator live. You can't live feed someone. Just stick it on your chest. Well, I'm sure if you go to Facebook, Get a you shirt find with, it. A, uh, with a, a Oh, you want me to it. do it for you instead but of look, cornering my fighter? Look, yeah, yeah. But look, you won't even think about it. Just put it there. Put your shirt like this. <laughs> have it sticking out and just do it. All right. I'll do it. Make me a shirt. Get get Anne Charlie I'll to make you a shirt. It's get got with, a fucking pocket. Get with Kuhn Mai and make me a custom uh, <laughs> a video shirt. Whittle you want out of wood? Uh, uh, yeah, a video shirt, oh, and I'll and I'll geez. take it with me to, to Bellator. Two hundred. Unbelievable. It's not a video shirt. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I'm going to bed. Well, I hope so. Good. All right. Thanks for viewing, guys, and uh, leave a comment what you think if you if you share. Uh, our opinions or you, you you think we're wrong about something let us know and uh when we get time we'll we'll uh let us know how much we'll a answer. gallon of milk and water weigh i'm curious I, there's no I, way I think it's seven pounds some dude something a gallon of seven pounds man i, I want to say five maybe it's like f- five or six you're just gonna go down every number until you hit it right <laughs> it's between two and eight you sound like uh amanda nunez's uh post-fight interview holy yeah. shit she did have a very, very long, and we're not ending the show, but she did. She, she we don't have long, time to even cliff note what she's. I wish we could do like. I wish we could do like a, a video of us watching the, the let's fights. Do one. Let's do one. You guys wouldn't even believe it. You, you wouldn't even believe it. Like he's like he's like copying Amanda Nunes and like thanking people in their seats for her. Yeah, that's it, have to you have it. to be there. But it's pretty funny actually. That was a really long uh, speech. <laughs> But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we have the John Wayne Parr, absolutely phenomenal podcast. One of the most educational podcasts for anybody that's interested in Muay Thai, coming to Thailand, living in Thailand, the culture in Thailand, what it's like being here from from the guy who started it, from the first white guy that came to Thailand, lived in Thailand, and started fighting all the Thai fighters, including one of our best trainers, and beat him. Oh, you're kind of ruining the podcast. I'm just saying it's phenomenal, it. man. It is absolutely phenomenal podcast. And we're going to post that tomorrow night or uh, Monday morning, your time. So be sure and uh, check that out and give us a subscribe and answer any questions that we asked on the uh, comment section. Thanks for viewing for the 15th time. Oh, I guess we get one of these, huh? What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. The great Mike Swick. He's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, Jiu Jitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything.
telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on. Mike 